please stand and face the entrance to the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, and with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O God, who alone are able to give life after death, free your servant John from all sins, that he who believed in the resurrection of your Christ may, when the day of resurrection comes, be united with you in glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated now for our readings from sacred scripture. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Lord, 
You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. We are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. What echoes through the readings for the celebration of a funeral mass is uh, something that should hit us personally as well as should be applied to the deceased, to John. And I think there's a twofold blessing in that. Maybe even more than that, I don't know, but let's talk about two different ways anyway. First of all, we take comfort in these readings because we know that they apply to John. So we know that the Lord has prepared a place for him. We know that through, through the Book of Wisdom that the Lord is taking care of him. We know these things. We accept these things. We know that this tent, this, this temporary dwelling that we have, is going to die one day. But the Lord will be with us, and the Lord will take us at that time. And so we have this great comfort in knowing that that's what's happening to John right now, but also that assurance for, um, for ourselves at, at some time. We can look at our own lives and take Paul's advice and say, we live our lives in goodness 
so that we might share in that heavenly home that he has prepared for us, that our destiny may continue on that path, that we may go there, that we may be with the Lord in that time. And on top of all of that, there is this statement that, that the Father doesn't want to lose anyone. He wants everyone from maybe the person we would, we would think would be the most saintly to the person we would think would be the least saintly. He wants everyone. He wants everyone to turn to him. He wants everyone to move in goodness. He wants everyone to receive his invitation and to live as he is directing us. Everyone, everyone. He doesn't want to lose anyone. I can't say if there are those that are lost eternally. But if there are, God grieves about this. It makes him sad that they have rejected him and not lived as he is directing them to live. This life of goodness, this life of happiness for us, this life that gives us joy and peace, no matter how terrible things are going, no matter how bad things may be going for us personally, for our world. The Lord is with us and will see us through every bit of it and will raise us up. So it's with that kind of confidence that we celebrate the funeral mass and that we remember John. It's with that confidence that we are able to come together and celebrate and to remember his life. It's with this kind of confidence that we can go forward from this time, realizing that we will grieve and that we will miss him. That's true enough. But realizing that there will be a time, there will be a time when that grieving is lessened for us and the Lord will help us in that. There will be a time when we will be reunited with him, when God calls us home and we'll get to see him again. So there's, again, this, this wonderful opportunity in the celebration of this funeral mass. And I'm happy for everyone who was able to come, everyone who was able to be here at this time. It, re, it um, provides us support and uh, builds us up in hope at, at this time. So let's take some time now and offer prayers for John. I'd ask you to just please stand. And just respond with the words, Lord, hear our prayer to each prayer that I offer. My dear friends, let us join with one another in praying to God, not only for our departed brother, but also for the church, for peace in the world, and for ourselves. That the bishops and priests of the church and all who preach the gospel may be given the strength to express in action the word they proclaim. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in public office may promote justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who bear the cross of pain in mind or body may never feel forsaken by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may deliver the soul of his servant John from punishment and from the power of darkness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God in his mercy may blot out all his offenses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may establish him in light and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may call him to happiness in the company of all the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God may welcome into his glory those of our family and friends who have departed this life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may give a place in the kingdom of heaven to all the faithful departed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, creator and redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the souls of your departed servants release from all their sins. Hear our prayers for those we love, 
and give them the pardon they have always desired. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, Wash away, we pray, in the blood of Christ, the sins of your departed servant, John, and purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness those you once cleansed in the waters of baptism. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fa and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, your spou her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Joan of Arc and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Just a few quick instructions on, on uh, communion. Um, I'd ask that you exit out the side aisle um, and come forward to receive communion. There's hand sanitizer if you'd like to use that before you receive communion. Um, uh, please um, uh, allow the person to receive, to, to receive communion, give them a little bit of time to move over and to consume it and then return to your seat uh, via the center aisle. If you're not going to be receiving communion, you can still come up for a blessing if you like and just cross your arms over your chest and then I'll know that you just want a blessing.
Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him, and let your saints forever, for, with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servant, John, that cleansed by the Paschal Mysteries, he may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, please be seated. And Tim, if you'd like to come say some words. Most people knew my uncle as John. In our family, we called him Jack. And to me, he was Uncle Jack. And he was also my godfather at my baptism and one of my groomsmen at my wedding. He lived in Los Angeles most of his adult life, which is where I was born and lived until I was seven. I don't have a lot of memories from those years other than the embarrassment I caused him when I turned the hose on his friend Bob when he was putting up a swing set for me. <laughs> Jack had two great interests, movies and books. Over the years as I was growing up, it was through movies that I knew him the most. Every year when the Academy Award nominees were announced, he would buy a Hollywood reporter with a list of the nominees and mail it to my mother so we could all follow along on Oscar night. One of the great joys of his life was getting to meet Vincent Price. He loved to listen to and collect the original scores of classic films and knew the names of all the film composers. Even near the end, when he was in his hospital bed, during his clear moments with Turner Classic Movies running on the TV screen, and in a very weakened voice, he would mention facts about the movie that was on the screen that most average humans probably wouldn't know. His brother Steve said he kept Jack's phone number handy, and any time he had a question about a movie that came on TV, he would always just call Jack and get his answer. When it came to classic movies, Jack was better than Google. Um, <laughs> he also had a great dry sense of humor. My mother and I were able to visit Los Angeles twice while I was in my teens, and we spent time with Jack on each of those visits. I remember riding around with my mother driving and Jack going off on a nonstop monologue about virtually everything, keeping me in stitches laughing the entire time. I probably laughed as much during that visit with Jack as I did watching Robin Williams on The Tonight Show. <laughs> uh, his friend and co-worker, Susan Hambly, sent along a couple of stories uh, to share about how he applied his sense of humor at work when he worked for Toluca Pacific. One afternoon, while working at Toluca Pacific, and while talking about a movie he had seen, he answered a business call by saying Pacific Theaters instead of Toluca Pacific. Then, as she reports it, in his smooth style and with a grin, he tells the caller that Toluca Pacific is what he said, like they were hearing things. <laughs> Another time, he got in an argument over the phone with a broker who got abusive. So Jack just quietly hung up on him. When the broker called back and confronted him with hanging up, he calmly lied, telling the broker he didn't hang up and he thought the broker had hung up on him, all said with a big grin on his face that his coworkers enjoyed. <laughs> when he was in his late 50s, he had two heart attacks. His friend and coworker, Mickey Cruz, relays her story of one of those days, how he came to work and wasn't feeling well. And in fact, he was in the middle of a heart attack. And Mickey and Susan made him go to the emergency room. And he went reluctantly. On his way to the ER, as Susan was driving him, Jack asked her if they could stop for Chinese food along the way. 
That was Jack in a nutshell. <laughs> because of his heart condition, he retired early and moved to Asheville and lived with my mother. It was thought that she would be there to take care of him, but life throws curves, and this is where Jack really showed the type of man he was. My mother wound up with interstitial lung disease, where her condition worsened gradually over several years. Eventually, for most of the last year, she was confined to a hospital bed in her living room. Jack wound up being her 24-7 home health care provider, something he certainly had no training for and could never have imagined doing. He did an amazing job caring for her, and I owe him a great deal of gratitude for that. I was able to rest easy during that time knowing that she was in such good hands with Jack. While living with my mother and after she died, animals became another great passion of his. He took over the care of her dog and cat, but not only that, he cared for every stray cat in the neighborhood. He would buy huge bags of cat food and put bowls of food and water and litter boxes out on his front deck. When Tanya and I bought him an Amazon Fire Stick a few Christmases ago, he would discover YouTube. He enjoyed watching many interviews with filmmakers of the classic movies he so loved, but even more so, he discovered the joys of cat videos, which he would watch for hours. <laughs> Just about every time I went over to pick him up for one of our Saturday lunches at Kakula Restaurant, he was watching cat videos when I got there. Over the past little while, as Jack was sick and we knew this day was coming, I have spoken with various family and friends, past and present, and everyone used the same two words to describe him. Good guy. He was truly a good guy. He treated everyone with respect and left them with a smile on their face. And I'm sure that's how he would want to leave us now. So as we remember him fondly today and in the future, let's remember him as that good guy with his dry sense of humor and smile as we do so. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And in peace, let us take our brother 
to his place of rest.